24-7 operation. Uh, we monitor all of Qualcomm's infrastructure and, and uh, uh, Qualcomm Life's infrastructure. We're a 24-7 operation. We have uh, sister operations in Taipei and also in India, and we're follow the sun uh, model. We uh, monitor, you can see on the walls, we monitor all kinds of things. We have uh, you know, 40 point monitoring tools that all feed into different uh, tool sets. And uh, please uh, keep this interactive. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just chime in and, and ask. And what we have here is we monitor uh, the, whole, the whole stack. So anywhere from uh, the network, the infrastructure, uh, the uh, servers and the databases, all the way up to the applications and the services, including the carriers. We have good uh, relationships with the carriers. Uh, we have our uh, HIPAA um, compliant uh, data center here, and uh, we support uh, all kinds of different business units, obviously, uh, including uh, QLife, and we have a 24-7 crew that handles um, uh, a range of uh, different technologies, including the network and the data backup, so we're, we make sure that we protect all the data that's going on here in a, in a protected and safe fashion. Uh, we have uh, Sheila Kruger and Phil and Kurt. I just want to do a quick introduction. These three fine folk uh, are the ones that manage uh, this operations. They also manage the, the folks in, in uh, the uh, Asia Pacific and the uh, India region. Uh, is there any questions uh, so far on what we're doing here and how we're doing it? What are the people in front of us doing? Not work here, they just walk <laughs> 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 There's a little bit of truth. I mean, we have, um, these folks are um, doing all kinds of various things. We do have uh, different shifts and rotations. So we have people coming early on shift and a little bit later on shift. We do shut down for the most part um, later in the evening when the Taipei office uh, brings up. What these people do is obviously do the 24-7 uh, monitoring and triage if there's uh, of the infrastructure and the services. If there's an issue, they'll jump on it. If they can resolve it, they will. Uh, if they have to escalate it to our uh, engineering partners uh, or even our vendor partners, they will. They'll do that. Um, in the meantime, when things are going fine, which is the majority of the time, uh, they'll be sitting there and doing configuration, uh, testing, helping uh, with the engineering develop and deploy uh, um, our, our infrastructure and our services uh, around the globe for, for Qualcomm. There's maybe maybe just to add some color to it, um, from, a, from a customer perspective, what, what we're doing with all these different devices that are out there and deployed. Is, um, Mark mentioned the uh, proactive monitoring tools that we have. Yeah. So, so a lot of proactive monitoring. So ideally, what we're trying to do is is, tr is data traffic bottlenecking. Is it slowing down? And just try to get indicators along the way before anything would ever manifest itself to a customer. When you're dealing at the scale of business, you want to manage stuff as far upstream as possible, so it doesn't make its way downstream and turn into a bigger and harder problem to manage. And so. The relationships we have with all the wireless carriers, um, and and literally when I say the relationship, there's close technical relationships. So if we see something going on that they may not even be aware, be aware of, um, mm -hmm. we probably know a technical counterpart that we can immediately go and call and start to resolve. And they know our architecture, we know theirs, and um, and we can get it resolved. So it's all about just keeping the data flowing reliably and making that transparent to our customers. It's hugely important. Hugely important. And, and just keeping uh, our operations, obviously we're responsible for our operations going, but we do have that close uh, uh, contact. So if they know something, they'll give us a call and vice versa. Uh, we do have um, uh, infrastructure, if you will, to keep these operations uh, running as much as possible. For example, you, I don't know if you guys are around this area, but we're in the uh, power outage in, in Southern California. Yeah. Anybody yeah. remember that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All too well. It was, it was, it was fun. It was, uh, we, we didn't skip a beat. We kept things going here, and we have uh, UPSs, we have generators, we have contracts with vendors to come and keep the fuel and the generators going if it's a, a long duration, and we actually use them during that power outage. And, so we kept things going here. And to be truthful, this was the only place you could watch Monday Night Football. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. And we did. People knew that. And we did. <laughs> yeah. We, and we and because of that we you know Qualcomm leverages this operation for um, its emergency operations team as well. So we have that room there. We'll bring in ER, HR, facility security, um, IT, obviously, uh, and we'll all come in here. We'll assess what the issue is going on, and we'll work it to, to resolution. And we did all congregate it in there and, uh, and took care of it. So we we kept things operations going here. Yeah. 
Could you talk about how this becomes HIPAA compliant, or what do you have to do to make this a data center network operating center HIPAA compliant? Keep Riff Raff like me out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know all the actual technical aspects of keeping that. We can actually certainly get you to the folks that, that all the requirements uh, to keep that uh, that data center HIPAA compliant. And maybe you guys can chime yeah, in I on a little that, bit on that. Yeah, but I don't have access to it. Uh, go ahead. So there's there's multiple levels, but but everything from encryption and AES-128 encryption, uh, HTTPS, SSL, we have a private network connection with the wireless operators. It's not on the public wireless network, if you will. We have a, a private network. And then our physical infrastructure, I don't know if we're going to just walk by it or is that planned or no. It was not planned. It was not planned. But downstairs in a secret room that none of us can go into right. for this reason um, is a place where it's very secure for actual storage of the data. So all the data from all the devices we talked about literally flows through there and then to our, our customers and partners into their applications. So it's always stored in a very secure way. And it's, it's not, and it's not just a badge access or a lock, but the actual physical chassis, the, the, the servers and all of that is locked up as well. So it's several layers of physical. Um, it's very, very short list of people can get in there. And if you go in there, there has to follow a form to uh, fill out and sign in, sign out. High level of security controls on access to everything. And that's actually, by the way, well above and beyond what's required in HEPA, but we have the infrastructure for other parts of our business here in the leverage because you know the security of this kind of data is obviously very important. Mark, we, we touched on uh, a little bit about HIPAA and privacy. Can you touch on payment card industry standards in terms of security? PCI? Security group, yeah. Uh, yeah, we do have um, some PCI uh, data centers as well. In fact, we have a group that supports uh, some other business units uh, that are all PC compliant. We have a 24-7 